guys, Inita Mood Reader, and welcome to another video. Today, we'll be talking about 20 Asian books that you can listen to for free on Spotify. Many of us love Spotify for like, like as our go-to music streaming platform, but did you know that they also feature audiobooks? Um, I wrote two blog posts about this last year i recommended i think already 10 um audiobooks on spotify that you could listen to and um i think today as we are approaching may it's a perfect time to recommend some audiobooks for um asian american and pacific islander month um since i'm joining the asian readathon and i'm trying to curate my tbr i know many other readers would do so as well so i think it's the perfect time to share all the titles that we know so that we can discover more authors to support and read from so yeah um by the way if you're also looking for another readathon to join for me my friend kat from her bookish site has recently launched our midathon which is a readathon for armies all the fans of bts and though i am not technically a bts fan i'll still be joining to show support for cat so don't forget to join stan asian authors readathon as well the asian readathon and our midathon um prompts will be posted on the description below now i'll be talking about different audiobooks for middle grade young adult and adult readers of course i'll be sharing the spotify links down in the description so that you can easily add them to your favorites and you can play them when you're ready <laughs> so yeah of course you are you are also free to buy copies of these books to support these authors or you can use other platforms whichever flows your boat i just um appreciate how you know audiobooks are now also available on spotify um and i tried listening so I think two audiobooks already before. And yeah, it's a fun experience. I think the only difference is that Spotify doesn't have um, a speed option. So you don't get to listen quicker. And I'm the type of person who prefers listening to audiobooks on double the speed. So that's the only thing I think that would be a problem for people <laughs> but yeah anyway let's head on to the list the first book the first two books are middle grade books i don't know if there are more if you know some other middle grade books please link them down below but the first middle grade book is the comeback by el shen it is a contemporary sports story um an own voices take on a young girl who is trying to be a champion figure skater and also shows um how she also wants to be like a champion of her of her life so it's gonna be a short but sweet um story the other middle grade book on our list is the serpent's secret by sayantani dasgupta it's a fantasy middle grade book um and admittedly i don't know a lot about it so i'll just read a part of the synopsis for you on the morning of her 12th birthday, Kiran Mala is just a regular 6th grader li living in Parsippany, New Jersey until her parents mysteriously vanish and a drooling rakish demon slams through her kitchen determined to eat her alive. Turns out there might be some truth to her parents' fantastical stories like she is a real Indian princess and how she comes from a secret place not of this world. So it's going to be a fun adventure for everyone who loves reading stories about adventure and secret royalties or chosen one type of books. This would be this would be a good pick for you. And now let's go to the young adult reads. We have quite a few here. Um, first, we have um, The Wondrous Wu by Carrie Ann Leong. It's a coming-of-age story which tells the story of Miramar Wu. She is your quintessential Chinese girl. She's nice, quiet, and reserved. Um, she is an eldest sister, so she carries a lot of responsibilities at home. But deep inside, she is a kick-ass kung fu 
heroine with rockstar flash, sassy attitude, and an insatiable appetite for adventure. But unfortunately, um, we have a um, sudden death of a major part of her family which poses a challenge for her and where our plot would revolve. So that's one, the wondrous woo. Next, we have The Candle and the Flame by Nafiza Azad. It is a fantasy book, um, and this is the synopsis. The chaotic tribe of Shayatin Jin slaughtered this entire population, except for Fatima, our main character, and two other humans. So, in this book, the author weaves an immersive tale of magic and the importance of names. Fiercely in independent women and Perhaps most importantly, the work for harmony within a city of a thousand cultures and cadences. Again, I don't know much about fantasy, but if you're a fantasy lover, then this might be something that you would like to read next month. Next, you also have Wicked As You Wish by Rian Chopeco. Um, I, I might be a little biased because I really love this book. This book was very Filipino and I love all the stories about fairy tales scattered around this book. It has amazing banter. The writing style is superb. I don't know. There's something about Rachel Pekka's writing style that seems so easy to me to read. So yeah. <laughs> anyway, this is what this book is about. It's a fa fantasy book. Um, and this is the quick synopsis I got from Goodreads. When a hidden prince, a girl with secrets, a ragtag group of unlikely heroes, and a legendary firebird come together, something wicked is going down. And I promise it's a really fun adventure. Um, just get ready for like an amazing immersive world building. Just grab it. Grab a copy of Wicked as you wish. Next, we have <clears throat> um, Descendant of the Crane by Jo Wan He. It's another fantasy book, and this is what it's about. Princess Hesina of Yan has always been eager to shirk the responsibilities of the crown. But when her beloved father is murdered, she's thrust into power, suddenly the queen of an unstable kingdom. So, again, we have another chosen one type of story wherein she is thrust into a world of responsibility and challenges. It has um, socio-political, cu cultural themes, um, and I'm so excited also to read this soon. Um, next is The Light at the Bottom of the World by London Shah. This one is about a 16-year-old submersible racer. So I think it is um, set under the sea. So we have Leila McQueen chosen to participate in a prestigious annual marathon. In this race, she sees an opportunity to save, to save her father who has been arrested on false charges. But the prime, um, the prime Minister promises the champion whatever their heart desires, but the race takes an unexpected turn which forces Layla to make an impossible choice. Um, to be honest with you, I checked on this on Goodreads and some friends have mixed reviews about it. Some loved it and some actually once starred it. So please proceed with caution. And who knows, it might be like the type of book that you would really like. So uh, maybe give it a chance. The next book is a contemporary romance. Um... But still young adult, and it's one of my favorite reads last year. It's The Love and Lies of Roxana Ali. So it's an LGBT romance book written by Sabina Khan. Basically, um, Roxana has a girlfriend and they get discovered. So she realizes that she must find the courage to fight for her love, but can she do so without losing everyone and everything in her life? So this has, um, this is rep. This has Bangladeshi cultural representation and I really enjoy learning about their culture. So yeah, this is a contemporary that you would definitely enjoy and have some tears also shed along the way. Next, we have a duology. Both are available on Spotify. It's EXO and Crossfire by Fonda Lee. So this is a science fiction young adult um, duology and I think it's about aliens i'll just read the excerpt from the synopsis that i got it says here it's been a century of peace 
since Earth became a colony of an alien race with far reaches into the galaxy. Some diehard extreme extremists still oppose the alien rule on Earth, but Donovan Reyes isn't one of them. His dad holds the prestigious position of prime liaison in the collaborationist government, and Donovan's high school standing, along with his exocell, that's the alien technology in his body, guarantee him a bright future in the security forces. That is, until a routine patrol goes awry and Donovan's abducted by the human revolutionary group Sapiens, determined to end alien control. So it's about humans versus aliens. I think it's gonna, going to be a fun adventure. And some of the people whom I admire in this community are diehard fans of Fondly. So... I think this is going to be a good one. And now the last YA book I have here is The Oyster Thief by Sonia Faruqi. It's a sci-fi slash fantasy book. It's kind of like Odyssey. Um, it says here, Coraline is a shy mermaid in the Atlantic Ocean whose idyllic life is ruined by an oil spill that gravely sickens her little brother. Desperate to save him, she embarks on a quest to find a legendary elixir. So that's what the story would revolve around. So yeah, those are the young adult books I saw on Spotify. If you have more recommendations, please just put them in the comments, maybe with the link as well, to help um, other viewers to discover more titles. Now let's go to the adult books. I have quite a few here. First is The Mermaid from Jeju by Sumi Han. It's a historical fiction set in the aftermath of world war ii we have go junja a girl coming a girl just coming into her own she is a, a successful deep sea diver and um she's confident that she is a woman um already so she urges her mother to allow, allow her to make the ghost family annual trip to mount hala where they trade abalone and other seed delicacies for pork. Um, however, Junja has never been to the mountains, and there she falls in love with the mountain boy, Yang Suwol, who rescues her after um, an accident in her journey. But when Junja returns, it's um, she saw her mother take her last breath, beaten by the waves during a dive she was taking in Junja's place. So it's a historical literary fiction, I don't know much about it, but I'm sure it's going to be a fun adventure, especially if you are like a fan of um, historical fiction set near the World War. Next, we have the subtweet by Vivek Shraya. This is um, a literary. It, it's a fiction book that revolves around um, fame and celebrity life. Um, it says here when Nila Devaki's song is covered by an internet famous artist, the two the two mus uh, the two musicians meet and a transformative friendship begins. But as Rukmini's star rises and Nila stagnates, jealousy and self doubt creep in. With a single tweet, their friendship implodes. One's career is destroyed, and the two women find themselves at the center of an internet firestorm so it's perfect for everyone who enjoys reading about celebrities which is me um i also loved um um seeing you know social media and books also um like the repercussions of fame and like people's drive to get fame and what they actually feel when they have it so that's the subtweet we also have <clears throat> There's No Such Thing as an Easy Job by Kiko Ko Tsumura. It's a literary fiction um, that's translated in English. Um, it talks about a young woman who walks into an employment agency and requests a job that has three traits. Um, close to her home, requires no reading and writing, and will not um, expect her to think too much. So she is sent to an office building where she is tasked with watching the hidden camera feed of an author su suspected to of suspected of storing contraband goods. So the story revolves around the main character going um job after job after job, try like trying to find a purpose for her life and also being caught in a web of like mystery as well. 
Next, we have Offerings by Michael byung Joo Kim. It's another literary fiction book. Um, this one revolves around like the um, the world of business and finance. So here we have with a rapidly cascade, cascading Asian financial crisis threatening to glo to go global and Korea facing an imminent meltdown. Invested. Uh, Investment banker Day June finds himself back in his native Seoul as part of an international team brought in to rescue the country from sovereign default. So for him, um, the stakes are very personal. There's family involved as well. So it's going to be him questioning what he's learned from his life in the United States and also his beliefs as a Korean going back to his country. Um, next, we have romance books. First is Keep the Faith by Ana Tejano. It's a romance class book written by a Filipino author. This is technically not uploaded as an audiobook on Spotify, but it is like the season three of the romance class podcast. So this one, technically, you can adjust the speed because you can do so for podcasts. And it tells the story of Faith, whose five-year relationship ends. Um... And she has to go out of town to go to Iloilo, a province in here in the Philippines um, where she um, has to help the typhoon-stricken town. So there she also meets this guy who is like a prospect of a new relationship, but she's still also caught in the webs of the old one. I really love this book. It's really, really cute. And even though I've read it a long time ago, I still carry um, the Kilig scenes and the lines that hit me and the other references here in this book. I really love this one and I always recommend it to people who want to try romance class. Next, um, this is technically a trilogy, I guess, or a series of romance books from Harlequin and it's by the author J.C. Lee. Um, I'll go through each of the books because they are technically standalones but they belong in the same series. I think some of the car characters are related to each other. So the first one is Temporary Wife Temptation, where Garrett Song is close to taking the reins of his family's LA fashion empire until his mother insists that he marry her handpicked bride. But to block her matchmaking, Garrett recruits Natalie to pose as his wife. So this is a fake relationship trope, which I love. And we also have Crazy Rich Asians in LA, so I, I'm sure this is going to be awesome. Also, the second book is Secret Crush Seduction. This one, we have Adelaide Song, who is an aspiring fashion designer. She wants to prove more that, that she wants to prove to people that she's not just, she is not just this bratty, pampered heiress. So all she needs is a little courage and the help of deliciously sexy Michael Reynolds, her childhood crush, and her brother's best friend. But when her secret crush there's one illicit liaison, Adelaide, Adelaide reali realizes that mixing business with pleasure spells trouble for her plan. So this one, the trope is um, brother's best friend, childhood crush. <sighs> this is going to be amazing. It's also be like, it's going to be like a friends to lovers, I guess. Oh, I would love that. Okay, then third book from JC Lee is Off Limits Attraction. This time we have Jihei Parks. I see Eris facade is quickly melting all because of Colin's song. A fling with this film producer could jeopardize her one shot at achieving her own success and the movie they're making together. So this features another um, trope I love which again is celebrities, co-stars, actors. Um, and this one is um, going to be close proximity as well because they're making a movie together. So that's going to be amazing. Now, I only have a few books left. I think three books left. Okay. So, next we have The Tiger Flu by Larissa Lai. This is a science fiction book. Um, according to the synopsis, a community of parthenogenic women were sent into exile by a male-dominated saltwater city. They go... go so these women go to war against disease, technology, and the powerful men that threaten them with extinction. This is going to be a dystopian book um, with feminist themes, which I love. Um, yeah, basically that. Next, we have two books by the same author. First, it's The Hole by He Yong Pyun. 
It's a psychological thriller about loneliness and the dark truths we try to bury. So in this um, novel, we see Ogi has woken from a coma after causing a devastating car accident that took his wife's life and left him paralyzed and badly disfigured. His caretaker is his mother-in-law, who is technically a widow grieving the loss of her only child. So, <laughs> I'm actually really, really curious about this since it's a psychological thriller. So, I think it's nice to go into it blindly. So, I'm very excited to read this one next month, hopefully, or sometime within this year. And then the last book we have here is another Hye Yong Pyeon book. And this time, it's The Law of Lines. It follows the parallel stories of two young women whose lives were upended by sudden loss. It is a slow-burning thriller about unseen forces that shape us and debts we accumulate in life and in death. Sounds really interesting. So, I know this is like a weird combination of genres and age groups, but I hope you find something you like from these 22? 22 books, yeah. All of these actually excite me. Um, even those that I've already read before, so I hope you find some titles that you might consider as um, added for your TBR, for Asian Readathon, for our Readathon, and just, you know, for casual reading. And if you have other Asian authored books that you spot on Spotify, again, please do let me know in the comments or in the social media if you're interested to see the other books that you can read on Spotify. I also link down my former recommendations, blog posts, in the descriptions below and if you have video suggestions or recommendation requests please do let me know and i'll see you guys on the next video thank you and bye